I'm Philip Ward, Editor-in-Chief of Aunt Mini Europe. Artificial intelligence, or AI, is a huge issue this week at ECR, and it was also one of the themes on the opening day of the conference on Wednesday, um, when at the press conference, Professor Neeson from the Netherlands was speaking about AI. Um, Wiro, what did you say at the press conference on the first day? What, did you, what was your main message, would you say, to the audience that was present there? Yeah, the, the main message that I tried to convey was that AI is an enormous opportunity for the field. Um, we can learn so much from medical image data, and there's almost no better way to learn from medical image data as with AI techniques. And really the promise of precision medicine, to really treat someone in the best, the optimal way, uh, we, can, we can try to reach that by uh, incorporating AI technologies. But we're, we're not there yet. There's a lot of challenges to overcome. And I also addressed those challenges and how we have to work together between the radio radiological community and between the people in machine learning in order to uh, try to make sure that AI has a positive impact in medicine. Okay. Now, a lot of radiologists, um, our audience, are a little bit concerned about AI and they, and they worry about um, their own future and that computers yes. might replace them. What would you say to those people? Uh, definitely AI is disruptive because it's really... Uh, going to automate uh, new uh, uh, things that so far we thought only humans can do. So it's going to change the field drastically. But I think for a long time to come, human intelligence will complement artificial intelligence. And the same will be true in radiology and medical imaging. And I think as long as the focus of the work of the radiologist is to bring the best diagnosis and prognosis to the patient, they can do better with AI. And it will be be the radiologist with AI that will be, at least in the short term, I think, the future of, of our field. Okay. Now, some people think that there's been a lot of fuss about AI, a lot of hype, um, a lot of false expectation. Would you say there's some truth in that? Yes, I think, I think there's a truth in that. I, I actually agree a lot uh, with a statement that Elias Sirhuni made at the RSNA in last November, in, w in which he stated that these new developments Tends, uh, that the, the, the speed of, of change is, tends to be overestimated and the impact underestimated. And I think that's the phase we're in. I don't think we should underestimate the impact of AI in the long term. It will drastically replace the way we're doing diagnosis and prognostics. It will change the way we organize our hospitals. But there's a long way to go, and it takes a while before these new technologies really uh, have, have an improvement in daily clinical practice. So I think the, on the short term, yes, there is not so much yet that is really improving the radiologist's daily work, but it will come and the impact will uh, be very okay. uh, immense. Now, one of your co-workers, um, Dr. De Bruyne in Rotterdam, um, she has, uh, as quoted in the ECR Today newspaper, um, as saying this week that the big problem with AI is a lack of data, a lack of reliable data, mm -hmm. and that it will be another 10 years before that reliable data exists for the algorithms to take effect. Would you, would you think there's some truth in that? Is, do you agree with that? Yeah, I think I, that's a, yes, I, I do agree with that. It's really, we've seen that algorithms are better if you train them with more data. And we do not just need the imaging data, we need to describe the data very well. How were they taken? We have to have labels with the data. We have to know what happened to the patient. So these are actually very costly data to obtain. And that's why it's really a hurdle. But I do think there are also opportunities there. If we uh, start to organize our clinical workflow in a different way, such that we can try to learn from data that are acquired in daily clinical routine, I think we can speed up the process. So okay. yes, it is a challenge, but I think there's also ways forward. Good. Are there any other obstacles to the development of AI that you think people need to be aware of that need to be addressed? So, so, so I think really important for the people that develop AI solutions is that they uh, seek uh, for solutions that actually help, the help in the daily clinical workflow of the radio radiologist, that they do help in terms of getting better diagnostics and prognostics. So you, so you really have to prove that. In, in, in clinical routine that you actually have value. So that's an important hurdle. Most of the work is still going on a little bit away from clinical routine and challenges, etc. So that's a big challenge. The next challenge is to make sure that these algorithms are robust, that they can work in, in different situations, different hospitals. And finally, AI algorithms need to explain why they come to a certain decision. 
So there is a little bit of a black box nature and we need to address it, especially in the initial stage when we go from the radiologist towards the radiologist with AI. He or she needs to understand what's going on in order to adopt the te okay. technology. Now, um, in Rotterdam, you, I think there's a lot of collaboration between disciplines. You're a physicist yourself, I yes. think. Um, how do you manage that process? How do you ensure there is collaboration, for example, with radiologists? Are you located near yeah, to so, each other? Yeah, so I think we have the perfect setup in Rotterdam. Our group of people in machine learning and AI is located right in the hospitals. We're directly collaborating with clinical researchers, with radiologists. That means we have access to imaging data, to clinical expertise. We can have people that help us evaluate first prototypes of algorithms. We also have in our environment a spin-off that we launched so that we can even bring research software to, uh, to our spin-off company, Quantip, in order to, to build a prototype that we can really test in a clinical setting. So I think this, this uh, situation in which you have expertise is from different disciplines together. That is the way to, to, to move forward Excellent. in Good. the field. Well, thank you very much for, this is a very in interesting introduction. I think your overall message is don't be scared, embrace it, yes. and, um, and try to overcome the obstacles to AI's development. Yes, yes, very true. I think in the end that will improve the value of imaging for our patients. Okay, I wish you a successful Congress this week, thank and you thank much. you for joining us. Thank you. Philip Ward, Art Mini Europe, signing off.